So if we run that now, we should have a multitude of dungeons that generate. Alrighty guys, so in this tutorial we're going to go over the what is hopefully the final part of the dungeon generator. So we're going to uh, remove all of the unnecessary doors, which is going to be pretty cool. And then we're going to add a boss room. So I firstly want to hash over a bug that someone found in the comments, which will be on the screen here. Um, and this bug involves duplicating rooms, um, which I thought we checked for, but we didn't. So if we head over into our room controller script and where we register a room, what we actually want to do is we want to check if a room exists here, okay? So if a room doesn't exist at our current room load data dot x and our current room load data dot y, then we can spawn a room. That's cool, okay? So we're putting everything here. Whoop. Okay, so everything in here is going to go in here. So if there's no room, then we're going to spawn a room. But if there is a room, we can just simply ignore that room, okay? Because it's not going to mess up our algorithm or our layout or anything. So we can simply just get rid of the room because we don't want it. Okay. Um, then we can set our is loading room equal to false because we don't want to load the room anymore. So we can load a different room. Okay. And that should be it. So if we go ahead now and have a look. Awesome. So if we have a look here. I don't believe any of the rooms are duplicating anymore. So that is pretty cool. Sweet. To remove our doors, we're going to firstly go into our um, starting room. So if we go into our door script that we've created previously, I'm going to create a public enum. Okay, and this is going to be the door type. Now, this can be left, right, top, or bottom, okay? And we can also have a public door type, and I'm just gonna call it door type, okay? There we go. So if we go back in here now, and we grab all of our doors, we can attach a door script to it, and then we can assign all of the doors to their respective values, okay? And we want to do the same for uh, the empty scene. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So now that they all have a door type, if we go back into our room uh, script, um, in our variables section, we can create a bunch of new variables. So we can have a public door left door, public door right door, public door top door, and a public door bottom door. Cool. So now that we have that, what we can do is we can create a list of our doors. So list door doors is going to equal to a new list of type door. Okay. Awesome. So the next thing we want to do is within our start method, we want to get all of our doors. So we can just call door and we're going to make an array and I'm just going to call it ds for doors and we can get get the component in children okay of type door all 
Or actually, we can do get components and children, my bad. So, now, after that, we can check for each door type D in doors. Okay. We can switch based on the door type. Okay. So, if we have a door, door type dot right, then our right door is going to equal to our door. And break. We can do that for every single other one too. So, door dot door type dot left is going to equal to left door. Okay. Same with our um, top door. And same with our bottom door. So bottom door equals D and break. Cool. Now, something I forgot just before was that I need to add the doors. Okay, so we need to add each door that we find into our doors list. So now we have collected all of our doors. The next thing we want to do is we actually want to create a new method. So this is going to be a public void remove whoop, remove unconnected doors okay so all the doors that aren't connected to anything we don't want them here now we can do a for each okay and we can do for each door door in our doors list okay we can switch based on the door dot door type okay so we can switch based on the door dot door type. Okay, make sure these are lowercase because um, we want to actually be using this door and not just the general class. Case door dot door type dot. We can actually copy and paste this in because then we don't have to type it all out again. Okay, so okay, so if we have a right door. Um, we're actually going to create a few methods, actually. So we can have a method which we'll call our get right, one that'll call our get left, get top, and get bottom. Okay. So, so we can have a public room get right. Okay. And we can have one for get left, get top, and get bottom. Alrighty. So, get left, get top, and get bottom. Now, for each of these rooms, we can check if our room controller dot instance dot does room exist okay and we can just go well if it's right we can do our x plus one okay and our y value so that'll be directly to the right of this room then we can return our room controller dot instance dot do we have no so we actually need to make a method to find a room and return it. So x plus 1 and at y. Okay. Else what we want to do is just return null. Nothing. Okay. Cool. So let's quickly make a method for this room controller and then we can fill in these ones. So this is actually going to be very similar to checking whether our room exists. But instead of checking whether it exists, we can just say, we can just set this to a room so we can actually just return 
a room. And instead of does room exist, we can just call it find room. There we go. So that's actually going to get the room. So if we go back into our room now, that should be fine. And now we can simply, whoops, copy and paste all of these in. So I'll just close this. And we can check, well, if it's left, we can do minus one and minus one. Um, if it's on top, we can do Y plus one. Okay. So Y plus one. And if it's down, we can do Y minus one. And Y minus one. Awesome. So now that we have these, we can simply check if get right equals null okay so if we don't have a room at all we can just set our door dot game object dot set active to false okay and we can do the same for all these so oh. So if we get one at our left, then we can set it to null. If we get one above, or if we don't get one above, and if we don't get one below. Easy. Now we actually have to call this. In our room controller, after the room has been registered, what we can actually do is we can just grab our room dot remove the unconnected doors. Okay, if we now go ahead and run the game, we have a dungeon generator. The final thing that we need to be doing is um, we need to also make it so we can add a boss room in. Now if we go back to our dungeon generator script, okay, now it's just saying we're gonna load a room for every room, okay? But we can do a check, and this check, we can check whether our room location is equal to our, our dungeon rooms, okay? At our dungeon rooms dot count minus one, so the last room that was created, okay? And we can check that our room location and check if it equals a vector to int dot zero. Okay, so we check whether it doesn't do this. Okay, and then we should be able to spawn our um, we can load room and we can load our end room that we created previously I believe and we can do this at our room location dot x and our room location dot y okay so else if it's not nothing special we can just spawn an empty room now, if you want to create multiple types of rooms, what you can do is you can create a simple method to go ahead and iterate through and select a random string, and then you can just call this string via the method in here. And that will generate any type of room that you like. If we go to our end room, I'm just going to add a sprite, okay? And this is just going to let us know that this is our boss room, okay, theoretically. So we can add in a boss if you want, and you should be able to go ahead and do that yourselves. Alrighty, so just make sure when you go and add your boss room in that you also add in your door script and add the selected door type, okay. I haven't added my ending basement, so I'm just going to go to build settings and add it in. 
Awesome. So if we run that now, we should have a multitude of dungeons that generate. And they have their respective doors connecting to each room, just like so. Awesome. So you could also go ahead and add some parameters. So like maybe a boss room has to be maybe within two. Okay, so it has to be at least two away from the start room. So it can't be directly next to it. Okay. Um, you could add a shop at any point that you'd like could be a completely random point or it could be based on how far away from the start room is or maybe it could be halfway to the boss room so it could be like here it could be like there maybe you want it to be like here I don't know but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video if you did leave a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, I will try my best to get to you and help you out Thanks <laughs>